Hello and welcome to Financial Future. In today's video, we're diving deep into a topic that can significantly impact your financial security in retirement, social security benefits. For many, social security will be the largest source of guaranteed income for life, so when you claim really does matter. Did you know that if you claim at age 62, you only get 70% of your benefit, but if you wait until age 70, you receive 124%? That's a difference of about $1,350 every month. Sadly, only 10% of people plan to wait until age 70, but many more should consider it. Today, I'll explain why waiting can make a big difference. Even though only 10% plan to wait until age 70, I believe that if more people understood the factors we're covering today, they might reconsider. Let's dive into the four critical issues you must be aware of to make the right decision about when to claim Social Security. Social Security benefits are reduced if taken before full retirement age, FRA, and increased if taken after. The reduced benefit is permanent, but so is the increased benefit, known as delayed retirement credits. Let's look at this in detail. For those born between 1943 and 1954, the FRA is 66 years. Starting in 1955, two months are added each year until the FRA reaches 67 for those born in 1960 or later. Let's take an example of someone with an FRA of 67 and a benefit of $2,500 per month. If they claim at 62, they lose 30% of their benefit, reducing it to $1,750. Waiting until 70 increases the benefit by 24%, raising it to $3,100. This difference can add up significantly over a lifetime. Claiming early locks in a permanent reduction, while waiting locks in a permanent increase. This decision shouldn't just be about your current situation but also about how long you expect to live. Many people don't realize that taking Social Security before FRA while continuing to work can impact their benefits significantly. This is due to the earnings test. Earned income from wages or self-employment is subject to an earnings test until you reach FRA. Let's say someone's FRA is 66 and 10 months. If they claim Social Security at 62, any income over $21,240 in 2024 results in a $1 reduction for every $2 earned above the limit. This penalty is substantial. The earnings test changes the year you reach FRA. In 2024, the limit is $56,520, with a $1 reduction for every $3 earned above this limit. After reaching FRA, the earnings test disappears. If you plan to keep working, it's best to wait until at least FRA to claim benefits. Life expectancy plays a crucial role in deciding when to take Social Security. Let's look at some numbers. For a woman who reaches 65, the average life expectancy is 87, and for men, it's 84. About 34% of women and 16% of men live past 90. If you expect to live a long life, waiting to claim benefits can provide a significant financial advantage. For example, if someone waits until 70 and receives $3,100 per month, they will collect $632,400 over 17 years, compared to $525,000 if they claimed at 62. That's an additional $107,400. Your life expectancy and health should factor into your decision. 95% of Social Security survivor benefits are paid to women. Let's discuss the impact of this statistic. There are four ways to take Social Security, your own retirement benefits, spousal benefits, and survivor benefits. Survivor benefits provide 100% of the deceased spouse's benefit. If a man with a benefit of $3,100 at age 70 passes away, his wife would receive this full amount, which can be crucial for her financial security. Men, if you have a wife with lower social security benefits or who is younger, waiting until 70 to claim can significantly help her if she outlives you. Given that 95% of survivor benefits go to women, this is a vital consideration. 
In summary, consider these four issues when deciding when to take Social Security. Reduce versus increased benefits. Limited earned income before FRA. Today's life expectancy. Survivor benefits. Only 10% plan to wait until 70, but many more should. This decision can have a profound impact on your financial future and that of your spouse. Next, we are also discussing a hot topic that's been buzzing around lately, the potential repeal of federal income taxes. We'll break down what this plan is all about, what it means for you, me, and everyone else, and how it might affect our wallets and the economy. So, let's get into it. Now, let's talk about federal income taxes. So, does the idea of repealing federal income taxes catch your attention? It certainly caught mine. This is an idea that's been floated recently, and while it hasn't been approved yet, it's something worth discussing. Imagine not having federal income taxes deducted from your paycheck. Sounds great, right? But let's explore the details and implications. First, let's understand the current state of federal income taxes. As of now, the federal government collects nearly $4 trillion in federal income taxes annually. This is a significant revenue stream that funds various government programs and services. For context, just this year alone, they've already collected about $2 trillion. That's a lot of money. Now, the proposed plan suggests replacing federal income taxes with massive tariffs on imports. For those unfamiliar, a tariff is essentially a tax on imported goods. The idea is to levy tariffs to make up for the nearly $4 trillion in revenue that would be lost if federal income taxes were repealed. Here's where it gets interesting. If the government implements high tariffs on imports, the increased costs will likely be passed down to consumers. So, while you might save money from not paying federal income taxes, you could end up spending more on goods and services due to higher prices. At the end of the day, the consumer meaning you and me will probably end up footing the bill. Let's also consider the economic effects. If we suddenly have more money in our pockets from not paying federal income taxes, consumer spending would likely increase. While this sounds positive, it could lead to inflation as more money chases the same amount of goods and services. We've seen this play out with the stimulus checks over the past few years. Another idea that's been floated is implementing a federal sales tax instead of income taxes. This would mean that every purchase we make is taxed at the federal level, in addition to any state sales tax. While the percentage might be lower than income tax rates, it would apply to everyone, not just those in the workforce. Personally, I think there's a psychological benefit to having more money in our pockets, even if we end up paying a bit more at the store. It gives a sense of financial security and freedom. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think repealing federal income taxes is a good idea? How do you feel about higher tariffs or a federal sales tax? That's a wrap for today's discussion on the potential repeal of federal income taxes and its implications. I hope you found this information helpful and thought-provoking. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. I love reading your feedback and engaging in these important conversations with you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Check out the other videos on my channel for more financial insights and updates. Thank you so much for your support. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.